Thank you, Mike. That was the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, this is the first of my 12 part movie series for 2022. Sorry, my 12 part sermon series on movies called Jesus in the Movies. Now, I called it Jesus in the Movies as opposed to religion and film or Jesus at the Movies because this isn't just about religion itself and film. I want it to be specifically about Christianity, but also Jesus. Uh, at the movies implies Jesus is watching these movies. I don't know if he'd watch any of these movies or movies at all, but I called it Jesus in the movies because I wanted you to see something of Jesus or his gospel teachings in these films. Jesus explains to his disciples why he speaks in parables. He quotes from the book of Isaiah. He says, they may ever be seeing, but never understanding May always be hearing, but uh, never hear, and I'm getting the quote wrong. And there's a lot that could be said about why he chooses that specific quote and what he means there. But I'm going to offer my own Scott Matthews interpretation. Parables are examples of things that happen in everyday life that everybody can understand. And the parables that Jesus used were easy stories uh, stories that were easily comprehensible to his people of his day and his disciples. And they were used to illustrate messages about the kingdom of God. Movies, in my opinion, are our modern day parables. They're simple messages that I hope we can all understand and learn just a little bit more about the kingdom of God. So that's why I'm doing this series of movies. And y'all know I really like movies. I always talk about them in my sermons. So without further ado, the reason or the topic of the sermon is Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. What is this movie about? Well, from the very beginning, we see that this movie is about faith and the motivation for our actions. Why do we do the things that we do, and is there a reason behind them? Is there a purpose behind our actions? The film begins as a prequel with a young Indiana Jones pursuing a fictional artifact. I looked this up. Is there a real cross of Coronado? Coronado is a real person. He was a Spanish explorer, Francisco uh, de Cortez Coronado. Um, he may have had a cross, but there's not actually a cross of Coronado that's a real archaeological artifact. But the film begins as he's on a Boy Scout trip and he finds some bandits seeking the cross of Coronado. Now, why do the bandits want the cross? They want it for financial gain. Why does Indiana Jones want it? Well, he says it should be in a museum. I guess that's a more noble motivation for getting it than the bandits. And their motivation, they just want it for money. But it's arguably not really a pure motivation at all. Neither of them are looking for this cross because they think it will bring glory to God. Even Indiana Jones, who says he wants to put it in a museum, there is some earthly, worldly gain for him. Maybe he'll be a more famous archaeologist if it's in a museum and they say, hey, you know who got that? Indiana Jones. So there's maybe not the purest of motivations by either side. Now that theme of motivation and the reason we do things arises again with the main topic of the film, which is the search for the Holy Grail. What is the Holy Grail? Well, the film tells us that uh, through the villain, Walter Donovan, he explains that it is the cup that Jesus drank from at the Last Supper. But more than that, he says... That cup was also at the crucifixion, and it was a put there by Joseph of Arimathea, and it was used to catch the blood of Jesus as he lay bleeding on the cross. Now, how much of that is true? Well, Joseph of Arimathea was a real person. He's actually mentioned in all four Gospels, which I've said before is significant. If somebody's in all four Gospels or a story is, I think there's some significance to that. But, uh, of course, Joseph 
of, in the four Gospels, he is the person who owns the tomb where Jesus is laid. And he asks Pontius Pilate for permission to take Jesus' body off the cross and prepare it for burial. So that's who Joseph of Arimathea is. But this legend described by Walter Donovan is not true. It's not, it certainly doesn't have any scriptural backing to say that it's true. Now, we can presume that there may have at one time existed a Holy Grail. After all, at the Last Supper, Jesus had to drink from something. He didn't scoop the wine into his hands. And in fact, when we do our communion liturgy, we say uh, when the supper was over, he offered the cup, poured the wine and said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for, for the forgiveness of sins. So it probably existed at one time or another. But we have to ask ourselves, why is it so important in this story? Why does Indiana Jones want the Holy Grail? He asked his friend Marcus Brody in an earlier scene. He says, do you believe in the Grail, Marcus? And Marcus replies, the search for the Grail is the search for the divine in all of us. Now, we don't know why he's seeking when Marcus says, when you seek the grail, you're seeking eternal life. That's what you want. That's certainly the stated objection of the villain, Mr. Donovan and Elsa Schneider. They want eternal life. Now, why does Indiana Jones seek it? Well, the character Kasim of the Brotherhood of the Cross who pursues him and uh, they get into the boat chase. He says, he asks Indiana Jones, why do you seek the grail? Is it for Christ's glory or is it for your own glory? And Indiana Jones says, neither. I just want to save my father. I guess that's a noble enough interpretation or a noble enough desire, but it's still not really the purest motivation for Indiana Jones. But being that as it may, um, this character, Kasim, he gives Indiana Jones the location of his father. Now, we don't know whether Indiana Jones is a believer or not. He could be an agnostic or an atheist, but the question of his faith rises again and presents itself so that we have to find an answer when they finally get to the temple at the end where the grail is located. Spoiler alert for those of you that didn't watch the movie, the Nazi, Mr. Donovan, turns out he is a Nazi, that's a big reveal, he shoots Indiana Jones' father, played by Sean Connery, and he says to Indiana Jones, now is the time to ask yourself what you really believe. We'll talk about pressure being put on. He can't put off this question anymore. If he doesn't figure out what he believes, his father is going to die because he's been shot in the stomach. And furthermore, he'll probably die because the Nazis will shoot him if he doesn't go and get the Holy Grail. So now his faith is truly put to the test. And there are three tests. And his father has kept his journal, so he has learned from a lifetime of research what the three tests are. The first is that it's called the breath of God. Only the penitent man shall pass. What does that word mean, penitent? Penitent describes, it's an adjective that describes somebody who repents, somebody who asks forgiveness for their sins. Now, probably not the wisest move for him to just walk in there without really knowing the mystery of the of this challenge but he figures it out before it's too late and he says a humble man a penitent man kneels before god and then he kneels and avoids having his head cut off by that uh, razor blade that comes through the next challenge is the word of god he must spell the word jehovah by jumping to different platforms with letters on them now jehovah for those of you who don't know is a latin word and it's the Latin translation of the Hebrew word Yahweh. Yahweh is God's name in the Old Testament. So the word of God is literally his name, and it's used in Latin. Now, I don't know anything about Latin, but apparently uh, Jehovah uh, is an I. It begins with an I in Latin because he almost falls through when he jumps on the wrong letter. So the final, most challenging portion of the three tests is the leap of faith. In his father's journal, it says, only a leap from the lion's head, with a leap from the lion's head, shall the worthy man pass. This is where our scripture comes into play today. 
Indiana Jones realizes that he must take a leap of faith. Now, a leap of faith like this would be difficult for all of us. And our scripture lesson shows us today that believing in something that you cannot see is difficult for everybody. It was particularly difficult for Thomas. Now, Thomas, of all people, should have had more faith than any of us. He had seen Christ perform countless miracles, and he had been with him for three years during his ministry. And yet, Thomas, of all people, does not believe until he can physically touch the wounds in Jesus' hands and his side. Now, what does Jesus say to this? He could say, are you kidding me, Thomas? Come on, man. But he doesn't say that. He says, go ahead, feel the wounds in my hands and the wound in my side. And then Jesus does, goes one step farther and basically says, I get it. I understand. It's okay. You see, you believe because you have seen. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet still believe. Hebrews 11 Chapter 11, verse 1 says, Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Indiana Jones couldn't see the path before him. And likewise, we have not seen God, not physically face to face, the way Thomas did. And yet Jesus tells us, if you believe in spite of not having seen, that is commendable. Blessed are those who believe, even though they have not seen. That's all of us. We're all here today because we believe in Jesus Christ, and yet we have not seen him in person in the flesh. Jesus says, blessed are those who have passed that test of faith. So despite not being able to see, he takes the leap of faith. That's where his moment, where I like to think Jesus, sorry, Indiana Jones gets his faith. And now, hopefully from that point forward, now believes in Christ. Now when they get to the room where the grail is kept, they have to choose. They find the surviving knight who's been there for a thousand years or so. um, And the surviving knight says, you have to choose wisely because just as the true grail provides eternal life, the False grail will take it from you. But the character Kazim, he goes one farther, one step farther. When he's laying, dying in the desert, he tells Mr. Donovan and Elsa Schneider, he says, the righteous man, for the righteous man, the grail will bring life. For the unrighteous, it will bring everlasting damnation. Pretty uh, severe choice that they face here. Now, what Walter Donovan chooses reflects on his misunder- his first of all his motivation for worldly gain but also his misunderstanding of the gospel Jesus was not a typical king and his kingdom is not of this world Jesus came to Jerusalem riding on a donkey and he wore a crown of thorns the cup that Christ used was a humble cup not a sparkling bedazzled gaudy gold cup which Walter Donovan ended up choosing, and he chose poorly, as the knight said. And I think it's pretty good special effects, even by today's standards, what happens to him after he drinks from the poor, the the false grail. He turns into like a skeleton monster thing. Um, But then Indiana Jones, when he's looking for the cup, he says, that is the cup of a carpenter, kind of a shabby looking cup. And he picks that and drinks from the cup. And the knight tells him, you have chosen wisely. So now Indiana Jones is going to live forever, right? No, the knight tells him, you must stay here in the temple. You cannot take the grail beyond here. That is the price of immortality. Well, that sounds kind of depressing. The price of immortality is you have to stay in a musty old temple and hang out with this knight for the rest of your life. Well, there is a price for immortality. We won't be confined to a temple forever. That is kind of a uh, stark image and harsh way to think about it. But we will have to service God. We will live in service to our fellow man and to God. Of course, in serving our fellow man, we serve God. 
The call to worship that Mike read to us from Mark chapter 10 tells us that he who truly wants to be great must first become a servant. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve others. And we have to serve others and be in service to God to ultimately achieve salvation. But also, that's what the kingdom of God will look like. We'll serve each other and we'll be serving God. As Revelation describes how the city of life, the kingdom of God will look like, and it says they will be in service to God eternally. So we will all serve God. And if you don't want to serve God, if that's not the reason why you want the Holy Grail, then you're more like Indiana Jones' uh, love interest in the movie Elsa Schneider. She wants the grail for the wrong reasons. After uh, they actually get out of the temple, uh, his father says, Elsa never believed in the grail. She saw it as a treasure, as a worldly treasure, like Mr. Donovan did. And unfortunately, she did not meet a good end. And fortunately for us, Indiana Jones also had that temptation for earthly treasure when he's reaching for the cup at the end. But his father says, let it go. And he lets it go. And they go on to presumably a life and service of Christ. Now, the good news, the ultimate takeaway from this, you're probably wondering, do we have to go find some cup in a temple somewhere in the Middle East to find eternal life? No, we don't. You don't need to find the eternal, the Holy Grail to find eternal life. That's the great irony of the villain in this movie. He didn't understand that. He says, I want eternal life. I'm seeking eternal life. You don't need the Holy Grail to achieve eternal life. All you have to do for eternal life is to ask for it by asking Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior and forgive you of your sins. That is how you achieve eternal life. Not by drinking from some cup, if it does exist or it doesn't. And that is the ultimate lesson of this film. About the motivations for why people do stuff and what the motivation should have been. And not only that, but how you achieve eternal life. It's not through some old cup. It is through faith in Jesus Christ and asking for forgiveness of your sins. When the movie ends, Indiana Jones' father says, or he, he, Indiana Jones says to his father, what did you learn from all this? And he says, illumination. I hope that this message has illuminated the gospel just a little bit for you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.